Hey folks, this is Riker with the Diablo 3 Season 25 Demon Hunter build guide. This guide is for the updated Marauder build, which got reworked this season and now rockets up in power to being the strongest Demon Hunter build for Season 25. In this video, we're going to cover the gear, the skills, and the playstyle that you need to rock this build. And the gameplay footage you're seeing in the background was recorded by the Demon Hunter god himself, Wudijo, and you can follow along with the written version of this guide by Wudijo on maxroll.com. GG. Link in the description. That ring guide will be kept up to date season over season and throughout the season as any new meta information emerges. So let's start by taking a look at the gear, the Marauder set. Evidently, this build requires you to benefit from the full six pieces of the set. The two piece bonus companion calls all companion types to your side. Nice little buff, not too significant, but four piece. Your sentries cast elemental arrow, chakram, impale. Multi-shot and cluster arrow when you do. Those last two are the key ones here, multi-shot and cluster arrow. As well as automatically cast your equipped hatred spenders. So roughly once per second, your sentries will automatically attack, shooting out your equipped hatred spender. If you have multiple hatred spenders equipped, they only pick one. So again, the sentries will shoot whenever you shoot and passively every second as well. Tasker and Theo, the gloves that increase the attack speed of your pets, would make your turrets attack about 25% faster, but that's not good enough to be worked into this build. Then onto the six piece bonus, your primary skills, elemental arrow, chakram impale, multi-shot, cluster arrow, companions, vengeance, and sentries deal 12,000% increased damage for every active sentry. So again, our key there is multi-shot, cluster arrow, and sentries. Those are the ones we care about. So for every sentry you have equipped, you're getting 12,000% extra damage. So we want to maximize how many sentries we have equipped. This also means with our playstyle or whenever we spawn in and we have zero sentries, we want to deploy those sentries as fast as possible to ramp up our damage bonus. To that end, we're going to want the Bombardier's Rucksack. You may have two additional sentries. By the base sentry skill, you could only have two sentries. With the Bombardier's Rucksack, we're going to get two additional sentries. We're up to four. With the passive, we're going to bring that up to five. That's the max sentries you can have in the game. So Bombardier's Rucksack, essential item. The buff to Cluster Arrow might make you think, okay, so we're going to pick Cluster Arrow as our damage dealing skill? You could. There's two variants here. There's the Cluster Arrow variant, and there's also the Multi-Shot variant. And both are about equally viable. I believe at the highest end of play we might see multi-shot topping out, but Cluster Arrow is basically just as strong and arguably easier to play. The positioning of your turrets becomes important, and the positioning of the turrets with Cluster Arrow is a little easier, as we'll go over here. Now the weapon we're going to take is the Yang's Recurve. Multi-shot attacks 50% faster, and its damage is increased by 200%. Now you might think, okay, well what weapon do I take if I'm using the Cluster Arrow variant? Yang's Recurve. And the reason for this is that as an inherent property on Yang's Recurve, we have 50% resource cost reduction. This is not a legendary property, this is just a primary affix. This build runs resource thirsty. That 50% resource cost reduction is going to be so, so beneficial that it is worth taking a Yang's Recurve even for the Cluster Arrow variant. And again, because it's not the legendary power, we need to equip this. This cannot go into the cube. Then in the cube, if you are rolling with Cluster Arrow, you're going to put in the Manticore. Reduces the hatred cost of Cluster Arrow by 50% and increases its damage by 300%. Now oftentimes we'll say whatever you have a better version of, you equip and you put the other one in the cube. This is a case where no. If you're running Cluster Arrow, you never put the Yang's Recurve in the cube. There is no purpose to doing that. Also in the cube, we'll have Zoe's Secret Belt. You take 9% less damage for every companion you have active. That'll be all the companions, thanks to our Marauder 2-piece. And we'll also want to work in two pieces of the Captain Crimson set. The belt and either the pants or the boots. We want to benefit from the 3-piece bonus of this. The 2-piece bonus of this set gives you some life per second, gives you 20% cooldown, 20% resource cost reduction, and makes it such that you deal more damage based on how much cooldown reduction you have, and take less damage based on how much resource cost reduction you have. Then in order to benefit from the three-piece bonus, 
while also benefiting from the 6-piece bonus of Marauder, since we're dropping either the boots or the pants, in our cube we'll want to have a Ring of Royal Grandeur. This reduces the number of items needed for set bonuses by 1. A Ring of Royal Grandeur can only be acquired from Bounty Bags. You can get it in Act 1 or Act 4 Bounty Bags, so do Act 1 Bounties and open the Bounty Cache, and keep doing that until you get your Ring of Royal Grandeur. We'll also take the Wraps of Clarity Bracers. Your Hatred Generators reduce your damage taken by 50% for 5 seconds. To maintain this buff, just pop your Hatred Generator at least once every 5 seconds. Very easy to maintain this large defensive buff. If you're running the multi-shot version, in the cube instead of the Manticore, you're going to take the Dead Man's Legacy. Multi-shot hits enemies below 60% health twice, and its damage is increased by 200%. Now in this case, between the Dead Man's and the Bombardier's Rucksack, it doesn't matter which goes in the cube, equip the best version you have. Now because we're using a Generator and a Spender, we can easily work in Focus and Restraint, the Bastion of Will set. When you hit with a resource generating attack, you increase the damage you deal by 50% for 5 seconds, and when you hit with a resource spending attack, you gain another 50% damage buff for 5 seconds. These stack on top of each other, adding together to not 100% more damage, but 125% more damage. Because first you're dealing 50% more damage, and then the other 50% comes on on top of the already buffed 50%. And then lastly for Amulet, we'll take a Squirt's Necklace. As a Demon Hunter, we are Glass Cannons. We are trying not to get hit by anything, staying out of range, because with a Squirt's Necklace, while not taking damage, damage dealt is increased by up to 100%, and damage taken is increased by up to 50%. So our way of maintaining our Squirt's Necklace buff is just by not getting hit. As for our Legendary Gems, we're going to take a Zay's Stone of Vengeance. Damage you deal is increased for every 10 yards between you and the enemy, which tops out at 50 yards. 50 yards is half a screen's distance, meaning if you see enemies at the edge of your screen, that is the highest damage bonus you can get against them. We also have a 20% chance to stun on hit. Now note that with sentries, Zay's scales off of your position, not your sentry's position. So as long as you are half a screen away, it doesn't matter if your sentry is literally on top of the monster, you are gaining the full benefit of the Zays. Next, we're taking the Enforcer Gem. Huge damage buff to your pets, and sentries count as pets. Mandatory gem here. And then we're also taking the Bane of the Trapped. This makes us deal more damage to crowd-controlled enemies. We should be able to maintain this buff relatively easily. For our regular gems in chest and pants, go for diamonds for more toughness. If you want to go full on glass cannon, you can take emeralds for damage. Then for our soul shards, in our weapon, we're going to want to take the dregs of lies. You deal 25% less damage, but your pets deal 25% increased damage. The brunt of our damage in this build is coming from our sentries. The damage that we deal while we are shooting is inconsequential. Why? Because our sentries are double dipping. The six piece bonus is buffing cluster arrow and sentries. So the sentries are buffed by 12,000, or technically 60,000, since there's five of them, 60,000 damage. And Cluster Arrow is also buffed by 60,000 damage, and those sentries are launching Cluster Arrows. And there's five of them and just one of you. So it doesn't really matter that we're dealing less damage, what's important is that our pets are dealing more. Then when you fully upgrade a Dregs of Lies, it's going to unlock one of three properties randomly generated. You're going to want... The property that makes each time your pets hit an enemy, your damage is increased. This bonus will stack very quickly. For our helm, we're going to want the Sliver of Terror. Your cooldowns are increased by 25%, but for every skill on cooldown, you take 12.5% reduced damage and deal 12.5% increased damage. It's relatively easy for us to maintain the amount of cooldown that we want, and this is just a very nice damage buff. Then for the full rank unlock, you'll want the one that makes your attack speed and crit chance increase by 5% for each skill on cooldown. Now we'll go over exactly what we want on every piece of gear, but first we'll take a look at the skills. Now for the star of the show, our main damage dealer here, we actually have a number of options. In this regard, Demon Hunters are actually pretty well balanced. Between multi-shot and cluster arrow, both are roughly equally powerful. Let's entertain the multi-shot option. Your rune choice could be either arsenal or full broadside, both being again roughly equally powerful. Playstyle changes a bit to sort of optimize the damage that you're dealing, but it's not like a lot of other skills where there is a clear distinct winner. 
Between Arsenal and Full Broadside, Arsenal launches rockets. If all the rockets hit, it's dealing a bit more damage than Full Broadside, but the rockets can kind of randomly hit walls and miss, in which case if your rockets are missing a lot, then Full Broadside kind of wins out, but they're both roughly equal. And then for Cluster Arrow, you have your choice between Loaded for Bear, the Fire Rune, Shooting Stars, the Physical Rune, or Maelstrom, the Cold Rune. Loaded for Bear does the most raw damage, Shooting Stars relies on some rockets, and Maelstrom is full on rockets. Evidently adjust your gearing based on whatever element you select. In this case, we're going to recommend going Cluster Arrow, Loaded for Bear. Then for our generator, we're taking Evasive Fire, Focus. It's a nice shotgun spread, easy to hit enemies to trigger our Focus and Restraint buff, and it regains a nice 7 Hatred with every attack, which helps out with this resource thirsty build. We're taking Companion, and we're benefiting from all the runes. The Spider Companion will passively slow enemies. The Boar Companion will passively increase our life regen and our all resist. The Fair Companion passively increases our move speed, but does not allow us to go over the move speed cap. However, that means that we can save 20 Paragon points and put those into Dexterity instead. Bad Companion passively gives us some Hatred regen. And then when you actively pop your Companion, your Bad Companion acts as a Hatred Potion, instantly regaining 50 Hatred. Your Wolf Companion gives you a 15% damage boost for 10 seconds. And your Spider Companion webs everything on screen. Next, we'll want to take Vault Tumble. Mobility skill, and Tumble makes the next vault we perform in the next 6 seconds half off, 50% off resource wise. Next we're taking Sentry Polar Station. We need to have sentries deployed, and the Polar Station rune chills all nearby enemies, slowing their movement, thus making them crowd controlled and vulnerable to the Bane of the Trapped, and other damage multipliers that we'll cover soon. Then lastly we're taking Vengeance Seethe. Now unlike many Demon Hunter builds, we will not have 100% uptime on Vengeance. Vengeance by itself gives us 40% increased damage, and the Seethe rune gives us 10 hatred per second. So we're going to want to actually save Vengeance for our big engagements. When you need that big damage burst and to not run out of resource, you pop Vengeance. As for our passives, we're going to take Call the Weak. Increased damage against slowed or chilled enemies by 20%. Thanks to Polar Station and everything we have going on, this should be all enemies at all times. Ambush. You deal 40% additional damage to enemies above 75% health. Huge amount of extra damage at the start of a fight. We need to take Custom Engineering. This increases the maximum number and charges of sentries to 3. And then we're going to take Steady Aim. As long as there are no enemies within 10 yards, all damage is increased by 20%. Synergizes well with our playstyle, we're keeping enemies at half a screen's distance. If you want to sacrifice one passive to take awareness for the extra life, give up Ambush. So for the playstyle, your number one priority is getting five sentries out. You're going to have to do this every time you die and every time you change level on a greater rift or a regular rift. Redeploying the sentries can be a bit tedious, but we need to get those buffs up. You also want to be popping your evasive fire once every five seconds minimum to maintain your Wraps of Clarity buff, and if you want to be maintaining your Bastion of Will buff, you ideally need to be actually hitting enemies with it. That's the difference between Wraps of Clarity and Bastion of Will. Wraps of Clarity just shooting into nothing will maintain that buff, but Focus and Restraint you must actually hit an enemy with your generator. Then as you're running through a map, you'll want to be repositioning your sentries because they're going to fall behind you. Although with Cluster Arrow, They'll keep shooting as long as there's no obstruction within the path. Those loaded for bear cluster hours are going to shoot from across the map to hit your enemy. Nonetheless, though, you're going to want to get your enemy within the range of your polar station chill. So with cluster arrow, you are pretty much putting all of your sentries on top of the enemies. This is a big difference and what makes it easier than the multi-shot variant, because with multi-shot, you want to be focusing on placing your turrets kind of in the corners of the screen. Multi-shot shoots out in a wide arc, so you want to get as much screen coverage as possible while also being mindful of obstacles on the battlefield. So the positioning with multi-shot becomes much more of a strategic game, whereas with Cluster Arrow it's a lot simpler, just put the sentries on the targets. As for exactly what we want on every piece of gear, on the shoulders, dexterity, area damage, resource cost reduction, and sentry damage. This is one of the few builds in the game where we're going to be buffing two separate damage skills, Sentry and Cluster Arrow or Multi-Shot. On our Helm, Dex, Crit Chance, Cluster Arrow Damage. 
Amulet, Fire, Crit Chance, Crit Damage, Gloves, Dex, Crit Chance, Crit Damage, Area Damage, Chest, Dex, All Resist, Sentry Damage, Our Bracers, Fire Damage, Dex, Crit Chance, Life Per Hit. You'll note that we're not taking Vitality in a few places here, and instead deriving Toughness from All Resist and getting Recovery via Life Per Hit. We attack very rapidly with this build, and Life Per Hit means more the more your toughness is derived from damage mitigation rather than raw health. For our belt, Dex, Vitality, All Resist, Life Percent. Pants, Dex, Vitality, All Resist. Boots, Dex, Vitality, All Resist, Cluster Arrow Damage. For both of our rings, Crit Chance, Crit Damage, and Area Damage. Our Yang's Recurve, Percent Damage, Dexterity, Attack Speed, Resource Cost Reduction. And our Offhand, Dex, Attack Speed, Crit Chance, Area damage, cooldown, and sentry damage. For our paragon points, move speed first, but we only need to put 30 points into it thanks to our ferret companions. Then dump everything into dexterity, though if you're feeling a bit squishy, you can put enough into vitality until you reach about 800,000 life. For offense, cooldown reduction, then crit chance, crit damage, and attack speed. Defense, all resist armor, life percent, life per second. Utility, area damage, life per hit, Resource Cost Reduction, and Pickup Radius. For our companion, we're going to take the Templar. For his skills, we're taking Heal. This will heal you and the Templar. And this is the one companion skill that scales on cooldown. So we're going to want to stack cooldown on our Templar so that he can heal us more. And again, because a lot of our toughness is derived from damage mitigation, this makes his heal more impactful to us. Because it doesn't scale based on how much life we have, it heals for a flat amount of health. We'll take Loyalty, gives us some life regen. We'll take Onslaught, because of the 10% damage boost. And we'll take Guardian for that free life. This is what allows us to get away without taking Awareness. Guardian on the Templar sort of acts as an Awareness, but you can always get Awareness as the extra precaution. For his gear, we're going to give him the Enchanting Favor so that he cannot die. We'll give him Flavor of Time, emanates to us, makes pylon effects twice last as long. We'll give him Flavor of Time, emanates to us, makes pylon effects last twice as long. We'll get Nemesis Bracers, emanates to us. When we click on Shrines, it'll spawn an enemy champion. Oculus Ring, when an enemy dies, there's a chance that a golden pool is created. Stand in that pool and gain an 85% damage buff. Ice Climbers, immunity to freeze and immobilize effects. We're going to give him a Creed's Flame Ring. Taking fire damage restores your primary resource. Just going to help a little bit if we do happen to be getting hit with resource management. Then we're going to give him two pieces of Captain Crimson's and a Lyric's Crown with a diamond in it to gain more cooldown reduction so that he can cast heal on us more often. As for the priorities of what to get on every piece of gear, strength is the first priority because all of his abilities scale off of strength, and then cooldown is the second priority. And that is going to wrap up this guide. Thanks for watching, special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind-the-scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.